Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm so excited to be bringing to you this gorgeous big deer in an autumn scene on canvas step by step. It's so beautiful, something kind of completely different than we've done on the channel before, so I'm really excited to share this class with you. It's a deep dive and some new techniques I'm throwing at you. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He is making sure that my cameras are pointing at what I'm talking about, that you can see the palette, that you can see the tools, the techniques, everything that I do to break the down so you can paint along for yourself at home. Now, also for you, if you check the description below, is some extra information. This particular image was inspired by an original photograph by Andrew Jackson. His uh, website and information is in the description. You got to check him out. Such a talented wildlife photographer. I mean, you could just spend an hour, hours in his website looking. I know you guys are going to find favorite photos and he's going to end up with a bunch of new collectors because he's so good. So that information is in the description below. I am not expecting you to draw the deer. So there is a traceable that's in there. And I will demonstrate that on this. If you're like, how, how would I do that? I'd demonstrate that on there. So that's for you to download. And other than that, I'm gonna go over the materials and paint the brushes. And we're gonna start this painting right now. So for this project, I'm going to be doing a nine by 12 canvas. I have on the palette, Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, Thala Green, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Sienna, Thala Green, Cad Yellow, Cad Red, Cad Yellow, Cad Red, Cad Yellow, Ultramarine Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Titanium White, Mars Black, Cad Yellow, Yellow Ochre, burn sienna and in the center titanium white and I have a reason for having the paint all out that way it's a trick to make what we're going to be doing easier but those are the colors if you have any trouble knowing the colors check that description below again because they'll be listed out singularly there as a list and that might be a little bit easier for just trying to figure out what colors you're going to be pulling from your paint studio all right when we come back I'm going to show you what we do next on the website is a traceable and you'll want to print that out and then using a product, I like to use a product called Serral Paper, but one of the transfer methods to get the line drawing on the canvas. By the way, if you've never seen it, this is Serral Paper. It's wax-free, and it is for transferring your drawings onto your canvas, which is pretty darn cool. So I'm going to place my deer slightly, slightly left. really tape down if I can oh, I got to lift up I got to go up a little bit so there's a little bit of laying it out figuring out exactly where you want it on the placement I'll give this one a little bit of a go before I give this one a little bit of a go you want to make sure it's taped down fairly tightly then once you have it taped down what you do is you draw over all of the lines pressing very hard with a pen or a pencil and what that's going to do is it's going to transfer the line drawing onto your canvas. You can totally freehand out the deer if you'd like. Um, it's a pretty complex, I can just tell you from experience, it's a pretty complex drawing. So I would do that if you're feeling good and confident about it. But if you like drawing, man, go for it. We have so much big stuff to do in this painting. We're going to just do this right here. There's a lot of antler on this guy. Yeah, I'm not rushing into that antler because I know it's going to be such a lot to go over. But again, it was a lot to freehand. I'm just going to say, just so you all know, it is a lot. Oops, I kind of went above the line there. you got to kind of watch those traceable lines if you're going to use one. Especially in a head position like this. Just a little bit of a three quarter. Can be a little more challenging. And we have to kind of do this twice, right? We get this in off of our line drawing and then we come back with our paint and create our stable sketch. You know. I do know. Pay attention. It's interesting to see how antlers are formed when you do this. To see how antlers tend to be shaped. Yeah. Yeah. 
they're an interesting, interesting element of this particular deer. Now hopefully, if you've done this correctly, when you pull your paper away, what you're going to have is a faint line drawing of your deer. And I've got a, I just realized I didn't trace in my nostrils, so I'm going to go ahead while I'm looking here and put those in. So <laughs> I have them. Because <laughs> nostrils are important. Then once I get that on there, I'm going to take a round brush and I think I'll go ahead and take uh, in this particular case I'll do yellow ochre I just want something that is going to be stable and that I can see and I'm going to very carefully on the inside paint in all those lines as well this is so I don't lose it So it's interesting coming from a background where um, I did a lot of horses. Deer are extra hard for me because I keep wanting to do horse-like things with them. Oh yeah, like you swap out different anatomy. Yeah, I really like often want to. So using a great reference photo like this really helps, you know alleviate that a little bit. It doesn't take too many lines to hold the painting. Now I do tend to go a little bit inside my blue line. That's so my deer doesn't grow on me. Because <laughs> if you go on the line or outside of the line as you paint, you may lose some of your deer. I think deer plus horse kind of makes a cow. Mm hmm. Because it just now gets... I'm gonna sit there and really look at a cow <laughs> and a horse and be like, do I feel like deer plus horse makes cow? Come, I'll I'll come back later. <laughs> so that's coming in fairly nicely. Little nostrils there. And then, oh, the antlers again, right? And these I'll paint in solid. That way I don't lose them in the many, many dots we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing so many dots, guys. The number of dots is going to shock us. Is It's dot intensive? It's dot intensive. And actually, you know what's nice about a painting like this where there's a repeated shape intensely like this one is that it's kind of zen to do it all. Just going to make sure that my, my antlers are in there nicely. So this step takes a little bit, but this work right now sets us up for success later. And that's what we want to do with painting. We want to set ourselves up for success, not for failure. So like that's what's going on with my palette right now. I know I have to pick, make a lot of little colors to make the circles. And if I make them all ahead of time, it will go a lot easier on me. Now my antlers won't be yellow ochre, but this base will actually be really rather nice. So 
There we go. One side. We just have one more side to do. It's almost pretty on its own. Now, I think the ones that moose have, they just fall off at some point every year, just like right off their little heads. I think that sounds right. I've seen, I mean, like I've seen videos where they show that happening. I, I don't, don't know, know if that if happens was, with deer though. I don't, I, you know, I think they do. I think they shed them. I think they, I think they grow new ones every year. Because they have, the, they, they get. They get, uh, they, when they grow in, they're furry and they itchy. So that's why they rub their antlers on trees and things. Just takes a little second to do that in. And then once you have that in, you're going to uh, make sure you have all the lines where you want them. And then we're going to dry everything with a hair dryer. And we come back, we're going to start the busy work of making many, many, many dots. Okay, so for the next step, I'm going to be taking my artist knife um, and I'm going to start mixing up these little colors. Now I'm going to take the smallest amount of red over to my yellow and I'm going to make a yellow orange. I'll keep some red next to it so I can like darken it or lighten it as I'm going. All right, but what you want is a yellow orange. And coming right here, I'm going to mix a little more red to my yellow and make an orange orange. And we're making an orange orange. And I'll leave a little red next to it too, just in case I have to darken it anywhere. Or if I have to mix more. Just mixing this one through because it's, there we go, a little uniform. Now, when you change colors, you're going to want to clean your artist knife. I'm going to take a paper towel and just wipe mine clean. Now here, I'm gonna take my brown and mix it into my green. I'm gonna be making kind of like a little foresty green. And then I'm gonna take a smidge of that and make a green yellow. Yeah, it's distinctly kind of a green yellow. And I've got a little green and brown here if I need to make little micro mixes on top of this. And I'm just making sure that I've got nice solid color. So if you've ever got to do like a lot of work where you're changing colors often, this is a way that you can get through that. I'm going to mix up my burnt sienna and my phthalo green and make my favorite forest green. Like you do. I'm changing colors again, so I'm going to wipe my artist knife clean. Mix my brown and my black to make a dark chocolatey brown. I still have brown and black and yellow ochre out there because we got to paint the deer in and sometimes we've got to work with our mixes too. Wipe that clean and then a little blue over to the white. Make a very light, light blue. Yeah, it's very, very light. Very light. You can see it with your naked eye that it's blue, 
but it's a very, very light, light blue. It'll, it's almost going to be like a, a white, you know, but it'll read as the sky. And I've got a little blue here, so if I need to make something more blue or I need to make something more of a color, then I can. Once you have all those mixed up, you're ready. And when we come back, I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so the secret to this is going to be my number 12 Princeton Select Round Blender. Don't have one of these. You could use a round hog bristle brush. Don't have one of those. You could use uh, very carefully just the toe of a deer foot stippler. This one here. If you don't have that, if you happen to be lucky and you have my pouncers that I made back when, the pouncers would make this very, very easily. But we're not using the pouncers today. We're using a brush. And we're going to start out by putting in some basic patterns. So I'm going to come here to my dark green. And I'm going to begin by making a little circle. And then another little circle next to it. And another little circle next to it. Even though it's one color, I'm going to be doing the circles because the pattern also is going to show. That makes a lot of sense. We'll be at this for a while. But we don't mind. Come right up to my dear. My dear, my dear. Make some big, some small. So as you're building this up here, you're going to go through the different colors that you've mixed up? Yes. We'll be changing those out, and that will let us just do this repetitive work. All right, I can come here. Add a little more green. See how that process kind of works where we're just adding different little values in. Oh, yeah. Come up the side. It'll just be a lot of work to get this done. Come here and get a little of my lighter green. Some of this is going to be that it has to dry the way we layer it. So we're going to be mixing wet into wet and layering. Because we just thought, why, why have an easy time with it? <laughs> Well, there's, it's not hard. Like you said, it's just, it's just a little repetitive. It's repetitive. But it's time it makes... intensive and repetitive. This is not one of the ones, like I know sometimes you guys do a painting and you kind of whip through it, like some of my easier paintings, and, and it's really doable to do with them to just really kind of like go through and, and rush through it. On this one, I would watch the video. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although you say it's taking, you're actually kind of, Making some progress through there. Those little, they come in. Pretty, oh, pretty this small. is layer one, my dove. Oh, I know. But still, it's, you know. And we're just coming through. And there is sort of like, and then when we layer too. So like if I come back here, if I come down here, I'll show you. Like this is started to dry when I layer my darker green back over it. It reads as much darker, even though it's the same color. See how we can do that? So we can start creating those like depths. And then we'll be able to create highlights. It'll be a whole thing. It'll be a whole thing. Just little circles. So while we're circling the drain. Well, if we're at home following along with your circle patterns, patterns, mm -hmm. we'll be... They will, they, we would be just making little dots along the way. Little dots along the way. All the little dots. A dot every everywhere. It's like Roy Kent. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like Roy Kent. Now around here, I will have to be very precious and I will get into detail brushes, but right now we're just putting in the big. It's 
It's a very relaxing sound. <laughs> I will give it that. I'm going to come up to the top here. Well, for sure. Adding some little bits of green. I mean, really what these little bits of green are where you see them is that these are, this is a lensing effect called bokeh. Um, and it's done in the camera and I love it because it kind of is like, you know how when the light just hits your eyes and everything's a little out of focus and it diffuses, it gives you that feeling of just yeah. staring into the light. All right, I'm going to rinse out. Another thing I could do is I could have brushes going on like one color or another the whole way. But I'm not going to do that. Just doing the yellow orange now. You can go over colors. What we for sure have here is uh, fall trees in the background that are causing all this light color riots. Every once in a while, rinse out your brush because it might be picking up color from different places. And even though we're painting it in, I'm still taking the time to do circles. And where they layer over, I make a point of layering my color over. Just starting to get it. Those circles. I'm circling the drain, John. <laughs> is it is it espresso time? Uh, pretty soon it'll be espresso time, that's for sure. I could use an espresso. Soon. I don't want to lose too much of my little ear here, so I might very carefully kind of come along here. And then get back into my little circle routine. Many, many circles. I knew this though when I put it up for the vote. <laughs> like I knew it was gonna be I knew it was gonna be tough. You can see I'll come along the little antlers here. You don't think of these brushes as being able to do this type of work, but they absolutely can. And just kind of carefully work it through there. Now, when you painted the antlers in first, that preserved the white underneath them, so they were very strong, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it also means like when you have this busy of a background, 
a lot of times I'll do the background and then use the traceable to transfer my line image on to the canvas. But when it's this busy of a background with this many colors, can't use yellow, can't use white, and blue isn't really going to register because of all the different patterns. So you have to put the drawing in at the beginning. Oh, so like you can build the background colors around where you're going to need them mm -hmm. so that they can provide contrast to the object? Yeah. Ah. So if you did it the other way where you just randomly painted the background in, then it wouldn't necessarily line up where you want it. You wouldn't even be able to see the blue lines. It wouldn't even right. be possible to use the traceable. It would be too visually busy. I'm just using this brush to fill us in. All this area that's white is going to be this yellow. Not only this yellow because we're going to keep layering and layering and layering and layering and layering until it feels like we're standing right there and light is just cascading through trees. And I had this experience without the horns. I, I met a doe. I think it was a doe. Well, on a walk just around the area, like through the nature trail. But it's a nature trail in the middle of an urban area. So I was really surprised to like you know, turn the corner and be like face to face. I mean, like, like this, like face to face with a deer. You, you know, they do that on the roads too. And you end up in that same experience where you're that close to a deer and he's looking at you going, what are you doing in my walkway, dude? Why are you driving here? I, I, I walk with my family through here from one woods to the other. What are you doing? And I have to stop and let him and his family cruise across the street. I know I, I was sitting there racking my brain trying to remember everything I knew about deer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are they aggressive? Do I need to not make a sudden move? Uh, I think in the right situation, any animal can be dangerous well i feel like i had seen like online videos of like deer attacking people <laughs> i was just like but they were people who were being stupid in a no yeah. stupid zone and yeah. i was like i'm not gonna touch the deer i'm not gonna try to pet it or do anything and i just like talked to it i was just like very calm like i'm gonna walk right by you and i'm gonna respect your space and you're gonna respect mine and we're just gonna go our pleasant ways and be glad that we saw each other in the woods so you're not trying to get a selfie with the deer Definitely did not. Oh my gosh. And you know what? I knew it was social media gold. I knew if I had been like somebody who would like would risk my life to get a selfie, <laughs> it would have gotten so many likes. I knew it. But I was like, you know what? Life is more important. <laughs> I got gonna... kids to come home to. I can't die to take a selfie with a deer. Also, that isn't the news story I want to finally get famous for, right? <laughs> Right. YouTuber dies while trying to take selfie with deer. <laughs> it's not going to be a popular uh, thing that I want to I wanna have be thought of me. I would not enjoy that. I'm smart enough not to take a selfie with the deer in the woods. <laughs> but, oh. Would have been good. Yeah. Now, you may not notice this, but if I layer here, I can also get slightly darker dots even. So that's like something to think about as well. I go around the antler carefully. I almost thought of doing them black. But I did not want to do it black. I think the gold is cool. I think it'll give me a better base for what I want to do with the antlers. Yeah. You just layer right over. It's okay that they're shining, like they're kind of like light and through. This will build and build and build and build and build. So you actually want some, some visual disturbance. Well, it's been, you know what, this is a good painting for this week because it's been kind of a stressful week. Yeah. A lot of car stuff. Very therapeutic. Yeah, this is a therapeutic activity. Although I did paint this week. You did. You painted wheels. Painted wheels. You did, and it looks so nice.
Just circles. Just continuing on. Look at us go. <laughs> paint, 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 I have to tell you, like, in traditional art, they don't, like, necessarily encourage stuff like this because it's kind of technique intensive. And a lot of times they want you just to paint more immediately, which just means, like, just putting paint down as you see it. You know, whereas this is a little more structural. Well, there's... A time and a place for all things. There really is. <laughs> and I mean, I understand the immediacy of paint being on the surface to get an image represented. And I've, I've seen those studies. I also like when it's technique driven so that you can get really cool effects. Yeah, me too. Like there is no like wild pointillism. <laughs> you know, I'm just, you know. <laughs> I Well, no, what's his name? Uh... There was. There was a famous guy who just threw paint on the wall. You mean Pol Jackson? Yeah, Jackson Pollock. He's yeah. like he's like the chaos version of pointillism. <laughs> I wow, I would have loved to hear you argue that in art class. <laughs> <laughs> well, pointillism is about being precise with act with your dots to form an image and his was about being imprecise with dots to form an image splatters yeah what is a dot but a little splatter of paint little mm. controlled splatter. you've given your you've given your position i've, 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 I've taken right. a position i didn't even so know we it. have kind of this little mess going on here and we're going to want to dry i want to dry everything so i can layer i want to be able to layer 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 <laughs> And not necessarily have the layers lift. So let's dry it with our hair dryer. When we come back, we're going to add a bunch more dots. So I'm going to continue on with my number 12 round blender. And I'm going to start getting into my greens again. And begin to make little dots that are maybe a little out of focus in my yellow. It's just a lot of dotting. <laughs> the dots just well, go on and on and on. It's okay. I like the dots. You like dots? I do. I like them. They're bocatastic. Bocatastic is true. When it starts to work, it really starts to work. Takes it a minute to get to where it's working, but once it starts to work, it just really begins to come in. Just bringing in the greens. Rinse out. Get into my dark green. It is sort of fun to figure out where I want to place my dots, though. Such an excellent photograph. Great place to work from. Definitely, definitely. Check out the website in the description down below to see some incredible work, photography work. Really special. Just dotting it up. Dotting it, dotting it, dotting it. Just keep dotting until you're with the dots that you like. 
You gotta have all the dots you like. You can have as many dots as you want. I think it's interesting adding the darker colors in. They have kind of an interesting effect. Especially when you come over and you layer over the green so it goes much darker. And the layering is such an important part of this. Yeah, for sure I can see that. It's turning out really nice. Yeah, we're just getting in there. I'm going to grab some of my lime green one again. All the greens. All the greens. Get some greens in. Now I'm going to come in and grab some of my brown and black, which is my dark color. I'm going to come in here and start to work some of this through here. See, now that we're thinking about all the greens, I'm wondering if a if a, a John or a Hank ever paints with us. I that would be thing. really shocked if a John or a Hank ever painted with us. But I think... They uh, seem like painter people. I think we share some community. That'd be awesome. We do. We share, we share some overlapping community. Well, because creative awesome. people are imaginative people who like to learn things. That's true. It makes a lot of sense we would have some overlap. Not enough for, like, say, a collab. <laughs> I don't know. There probably is, but maybe not on the scope of their schedule. Yeah, I think not. Not that, you know, like, if, if time were an infinite resource, I imagine that uh, they probably could be talked into it, but... Time see, is an infinite resource. Well, for us... Uh, for us humans, not mere, so much. Mere mortals, we have, a, we have a finite grasp of that. Well, I'm assuming that, like, no one's actually got a final answer on that. <laughs> oh, I mean... Just but it's as like, as like, it might as well, the numbers are so big, like, when they're talking about the universe, when those numbers are so big, they might as well be infinite. Yeah, right. I think only Doctor Who really covers it. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm down with the timey wimey explanation. So I'm just taking the brown. I'm going to bring this through here. And I'm going to add it. It's going to be heavier up top in the brown. Let's represent branches. Not to like spoil it for you. So it's sort of fun to... Sure that's not Bigfoot? The little brown dots? That brown shape behind him could be Bigfoot. But the shapes behind him could be honestly almost anything, they're, right? They're out of focus. We don't know. We don't know. Could be Bigfoot. We don't know. It could be Bigfoot. Now I can go ahead and get a little more burnt sienna on my brush. Kind of hit this with a different little brown. And then I might get some orange. And I'm mixing this in. So see how by pre-mixing some of these colors, it helps me deal with all of them.
Grab some orange again. Just painting so many dots. Go ahead and get some green. Such a busy, busy time. So busy. So busy. Let me grab some just orange. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry again because I want a layering of the dots and I don't necessarily want them to fusing into right. each other. So I'm going to dry this and when we come back I'm going to show you what dots we're putting down next. More dots. More dots. More dots. More, 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 more. I grab some orange. Just putting the dots out. Now one thing you might run into whenever you do a circular motion with acrylic paint, if you have any water in your brush, you may end up get this thing called foaming where it makes little bubbles on the canvas. That's just you have too much water in your brush. You need to rinse it out and dry it off. And Foaming is not intrinsically bad, though. I've seen other artists, like, lean into the foaming and use it as part of the technique. So it's not even necessarily a bad thing. It's just to know what it is. Just kind of coming around here with the little orange ones on the outside. Again, orange ones. It takes so many layers. Adding little orange circles over here. Because you've got to also add the little highlights inside circles too, periodically. There we go, nice little run of things. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white over to my yellow orange. over to the yellow orange. Sometimes I'll come inside an orange circle. I'll just come through there. It starts to sparkle up a little bit. Rinse out every once in a while. You'll want to rinse out every once in a while.
Just really working through here. I love how the layers come together to build them up. Yeah, it really takes, it takes the layers to get there. I love how when it starts to really pull together, that really starts to pull together. Take a little bit of my green and white. A little bit of green through there. So many dots of color. Let's go. We're just like working it out. See, I can keep this sun coming through there behind him now. Yeah, that's what we've got going on. Important to keep your brush not too wet. I was getting some foaming, so that's why I had to wipe off. Look at that go. You can also just come and get some just yellow. And back into that orange, a yellow orange. I'm keeping just enough of my antlers to like know what's what. Right, yeah. Little orange. Maybe a little orange and white. It's going to look so cool with those antlers. Yeah, when this is all finished, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's going to look really, really good. Rinse off, wipe off. Rinse off, wipe off. That's how you got to go. Yep. Hmm. 
you could just see how every layer adds something. Every layer adds something. Pulling a little bit of light there. It's right about here where it starts to get interesting. Mm -hmm. Start to really enjoy the the finding the little spots and putting the little dots in so that yeah. you know that effect is there. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow and my green smidge of white. And then maybe a little yellow. And through here. Just finding my way through. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Let's dry it and we'll come back and hit another layer. So many layers, but the technique is working, I think. So now I'm going to come through and I'm bought my brush very, very clean, very, very clean. And I'm going to wipe off on my towel and I might grab some of my blue and white. I'm going to add some little circles, a couple of places with the blue and white. That's one you got to be kind of thoughtful about. Yeah, I can see that. This is like light coming through the trees. That's just the sun peeking through. That is just the sky peeking through. Yeah. That's just the sky peeking through. And we still have a lot of yellow dots to do. We're just getting some of this layered in. So we can have a little sky peeking through. Almost looks like white. But it isn't. Let's 
It's looking pretty good. Rinse, rinse, rinse. Rinse, rinse, rinse. Rinse, rinse, rinse. A little bit of my yellow orange. You can see why we pre-mixed ahead of time. We've done some good layering for sure. You know, we've got some nice little, nice little thoughtfulness for sure. Take a little bit of my white over to my yellow and white, my, my orange over here, which is a yellow orange. Breaking it up. You gotta break it up. Well, I think this is really interesting how the, the layers do really come together in this technique. It just takes a couple layers to get it there. It just takes a few layers to find your way through. But once you find your way... It gets to be a little bit fun. Just putting those little pops through. It creates kind of its lightening up. Put a little more yellow into it. I'm going to come up here and a little orange. It's kind of just got to find your way through it. Kind of putting the light yellows near my blues. So there's just a little bit of it peeking in. 
my yellow green right here. Oh, that's too dark. But if so, that happens, you just rinse out your brush, dry it off, and then when you go to re-swirl it, it'll be, it'll be fine. Just a little greenery there to kind of talk about, like, how it's leaves. I'm going to have the leaves. I'll grab some dark green and kind of work it through again, too. Isn't it wild how it just all layers up? <laughs> so sometimes my dots will be smaller and sometimes my dots will be bigger. And that is just something I do to like mimic the way nature has variety. A little bit of green here and there. Oh, look at that. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? I yeah. give this a little tilt look myself. See how I feel about it. Really like the effect. That look is really just about um, making sure that I'm going to grab a little green and yellow, a little bit of white. You know, we just find little spots and Just putting in those little dots, making sure there's a little green that goes near the antler. And grab a little bit of this darker green. And it goes into tiny dots. All right, let's dry everything with our hair dryer, and when we come back, I will tell you what we do next. All right. 
So we're going to start working on the eyes here and get some uh, some pretty going up front. I'm going to take a number zero Raphael precision brush, but what I'm really looking for is just something that's detailed that I can I can have nice small areas. And I'm going to come around the eye and I'm going to take my burnt sienna around the eye making kind of a little, it's the lidding. So around eyes a lot of times, especially on um, herbivores like this, there's a little bit of skin that shows. So you can kind of see the under, under layer of the skin. If Oh, that's actually a really good thing. If ever you're doing a pet portrait, a lot of times around the eyes, it will show you what color the pet's skin and it can help you determine what color you want to paint the pet. Now I'm going to take this out a little bit further. Just coming around here, just taking that out a little bit further. I can always easily bring it in, but it's hard to add. And this one I can take it away if I need to. So I have that nice kind of beautiful on the outside. And then I'm going to grab a little black on the toe of my brush and I'm going to come in here and just paint the inside of this momentarily black. We'll be adding some lids and some details in a second, but we just want to get that basic kind of in. And then on the far side, we have an eye that we're seeing a little bit. That's peeking out there. So we definitely want that. Now, generally this has to dry a little bit um, before I can work in other areas. So something that I can do is I can come into my nostrils while I'm waiting for that to dry and work my nose a little bit. And this is such, the deer nose is an interesting challenge because it's got a lot of black in it and then you see the shapes of everything via the highlights. I very much enjoy though that it's just the nose and a little stripe up the the face. Come around here. Let's make sure we got a little, little bit, a little bit up here. Maybe even take this in a little more. I think this comes in a little more than that. Just kind of sketching it. Now, if I have a line I don't like, I just come back with a damp brush. And I just suck that back up. Not too bad. And I think I might just paint this all black to begin with and then add the highlights in as I go. I'm going to leave just the smallest amount of my outline color just to keep track of it. And I'm going to bring a little of this black up here. Kind of scumbling that around. Just a starting place. And a little bit out that way. So that's helping that come in. Now I'm going to want to take a little bit of my white and my burnt sienna. Try to come in here very carefully with a bit of a lid. And then a little bit, something right there. Now really to do any more details, all of this has to be dry. 
So I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer, and when we come back, we're going to add more details to make these elements pop out on our figure a little more. So I want to come in and add a few more details. I'm going to get my uh, black a little bit. Just make sure that the shape of my eye is how I want it to be. I love, I love deer eyes. They're just big globes. Just so beautiful. So I'm coming around here just making sure that that's nice and refined. I may even come over here and kind of add a little dark line for lidding. And then I'm going to want to take my blue and white, my ultramarine blue and my titanium white. And we're going to come right here under the eye. Tap in the little reflection that's here. Maybe a little more blue even. There's some bright blue. And that's because, you know, the eyes are reflecting what's going on around. I'll come and put some highlights there. I just want to get the bright blue in. And I'm going to come here and grab a little bit. I want to make sure this is thoroughly rinsed out. So thoroughly rinsed out. Wipe off your brush with a towel. I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt sienna on my toe. The toe is the tip of the brush. And I'm going to very carefully Add a little bit of brown down there, just subtle. And then I'm going to grab maybe the blue and white again, or maybe just white, maybe just white. Check the toe. Get a little bit of paint on my toe again. Tip of the brush. And I'll come in at the waterline. Here in the corner. There we go. We have a nice little eye. I also want to come over here and I'll do the white first and then add the blue back in because that works. So this is ultramarine blue and titanium white. a little bit on that far side so their reflections kind of match each other. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and white. I'm going to come here on the inside of my nostrils. Mm. Sometimes I have too much water on my brush because it sneaks down from the handle. You got to watch for that sneaking. A lot of how this shows is through the reflections. I'm going to miss this area right here just to get some water so I'm not having to go to the bucket so much. There we go.
And then a little bit of touch this up here. Have a little white hair. Cross that. And then along here. Adding a little highlight. Along that side. Rinse out. Wipe off all the way down the handle because you just don't want that water to come up and sneak up on you. I get a little more black on my brush. Go ahead and paint some of this in. Come along here and make sure that that reflection is trimmed out. There we go. Just painting a little bit of black down the nose of the face. A little bit right here. And rinse off a little bit. Go back into my titanium white and ultramarine blue. Just make sure the little hairs are good. Grab a little black. I see a drop on my brush, so I grab it. You usually see it hiding on the underside. That's where it likes to sneak in. There we go. A little bit of that there. Now I'm going to take a little of my Mars black and my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre. Makes a kind of nice yellow brown here. Get some white involved, as you do. And come underneath this little lip. a little bit of this right here coming down the nose a little water And a bit of a brush that down. I'm just using the brush to just sort of brush that down. I can always come into my ultramarine blue. Create a little shading. right there.
And then and come back up to my black. Right off the side of that. Add a little bit of that line for the mouth. All right. Now we're going to want to dry everything. And when we come back, I'll show you what we do next. So let's do some antlers for a little bit. I've got a number six Raphael sepia here, and I'm going to get it a little bit wet. And I'm going to come over into my Mars Black Burnt Sienna. And we'll start the base of the antlers in this color. Mars Black and Burnt Sienna. And I'll start over at the farthest distance from me. Too much water on that brush. That has been my issue lately. Just a nice slow brush stroke coming down. I might put on my glasses again when I see them. <laughs> put there they are. When you can't see your glasses because you don't have your glasses. It helps to be able to see. So like that's just true just generally in art. If you're having any difficulty seeing your work, it makes it much more challenging. It's a lot of times why artists put artwork on a table that's curved up or an easel. Because you can see the work better. Antlers are pretty interesting structures. They have a lot in common with trees. So that makes me feel like, you know, tree techniques, be good antler techniques. And I'm just being slow and methodical. And a lot of times I come through here and I just cook. Just going real fast. But on stuff like this, you want to have a little bit of a little bit of a thoughtfulness. When my brush moves slowly, it also puts down paint smoother. Just slow and steady. You've been hunting, haven't you? You've been hunting. You mean, mean like in the woods for deer? Yeah. Yeah. I've never got one. But you've looked. I went, I went, I went, what would be more accurate is that I went camping and we looked for some deer while holding <laughs> muzzle loaders. Okay. It was a nice day. It was a nice day. And a nice day for the deer because you didn't find them. No, we didn't find them. The deer liked that, I'm telling you. I think I liked it too because, you know, I think the deer are probably better in the woods where they are. Just, you know, for me. Yeah, I agree. know why I do that <laughs> but it makes me happy now I'm gonna add some bumps to this and that's because there's there is some like rough structure to the base of the antler a little water thin it out do the roll And I'm trying to work left to right um, because I'm right-handed and I tend to rest my hand on the canvas.
making a rough end here too from where it comes out of his little heads. Feels like he could defend himself with this little rack. I would so, think so, yeah. I've heard like um I just I often think of photography as like kind of a version of peaceful hunting. Yeah. Like going out and doing nature photography. You're still like going out and enjoying nature and finding animals, but you know, instead you capture a trophy of a picture instead of an actual animal. But this this deer, he has a really nice uh set of antlers, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. And this winter they'll fall off. And this winter they'll fall off. Or spring. I don't know. They fall Sometime off. Sometime they fall off. Yeah. I think. I love trail cams when they capture the moment like a moose's antlers falls off because they always seem so surprised by it. <laughs> like they run away like they did something wrong. You can almost see the moose going, oh my. <laughs> I got to get out of here before they know it was me. Sometimes I like to work from a dark value to a light value. I think it helps me. This particular one was very interesting because it had sort of a thick thickening over on one side, which I thought was super distinctive. That's a lot to do. A little careful job of painting our antlers. And while my antlers are being painted in, I'm going to take my... This is the Burnt Sienna Yellow Ochre. And I'm going to go ahead and take the time to paint the inside of the ears. This will help me put in a little fluff later, so that's why I'm taking this time now to put it in. I'm hoping everyone will check out um, Jackson's photography site because he's got some really beautiful stuff. I may paint another one from his site again in the future. He's got a white squirrel I'm pretty crazy about, baby ducks, pretty cute stuff. Even yeah. cute bugs. Cute nature, cute bugs. Very, very talented photographer with a spectacular eye for composition and opportunity, man. All right. And that's in the description down below. So if you're looking for that and you and you want to see more about the photographer who was the inspiration for this painting, check that description, check out his website, because I think you'll be really tickled at how nice the work is. All right, when we come back after this is all dry, I'm going to show you what we do next. So let's start laying in some color on our cute guy here. Actually, I probably can see him with just my regular eyes, just my regular eyes. And I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my... I'm going to just sort of do a general value study. I'm going to take a little of my black and brown back here. And this is a number eight catalyst uh, polytip filbert. It's just a nice short handle brush that's good for um, heavy bodied acrylic paint. Now the crispness of this line is very important to me. 
because it's part of what helps him stand out from his background is how crisp the lines are on him. And you can just paint this whole thing this darker, darker color. fun to paint things that are brown. It's a nice value study. Bring that through here. So I've got the back there and then I'm going to come around here and curve this brush stroke a little bit. And as I'm going, I'm going to get a little more yellow ochre. some water very carefully capture the line of his neck Making sure it's covered. And brush that back in so it has a nice value. It has to have a nice value. I may have to put my white marking back there a little bit more. just kind of thinking about the directionality of my brush stroke to help inform the shape and everything and what I've got going on here. Then back into my brown and along the jawline with a little bit of this brown. Maybe a little bit of uh, just burnt sienna. Come up here above the little head. A little bit of burnt sienna. Just nudge. Nudge it. Yep. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of nudge. I'm going to come through here and very carefully if I need to I can always size my brush down he's looking super cute already Now, just for not messing up my painting, I may take this brush, rinse it out very, very thoroughly, get all clean. I don't want paint to dry in it. And I'll go ahead and take my round brush, get a little burnt sienna to my yellow ochre, and paint very carefully around my eye. I'm going to come around the ear. Get 
And very carefully bring this down. And while I'm at it, I'm going to come back into my dark color, my Mars Black and Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to make sure that I kind of come around the ears with a very dark outline. Come over here and do the same thing. Just a little bit of the Mars Black and Burnt Sienna. I'm going to take a little of my white over towards my yellow ochre, Mars black, and burnt sienna. It's all over there. Make sure that I've got a nice white little mark on the neck. Okay, look at us go. We have a blocked in deer. All right, for the next thing, we're going to want him to be completely dry so we don't smear anything or smudge anything. So let's dry thoroughly. When we come back, I'll show you what we do next. So I'm going to take my number zero precision uh, Raphael brush, and I'm going to get a little bit wet, bring it over to... I'm going to add a little more black over here to my brown and black. Just putting in a little more black so it's a little bit darker. Roll it and roll it just on the tip. I'm going to very carefully come underneath the lip. Just the finest line you can imagine. And I'm going to bring this just along that little jawline there. And then bring some little lines where the neck is creased. Bring a little bit right here. And back here I might add a little bit of a line, just kind of talking about what could be going on there. And I might add a little bit of a line right here. A little bit right there. Going to exaggerate my ears again. I think I want them even more. Then I'm going to come over into my yellow ochre and then my titanium white. Hmm. Gurgly. Must be time for lunch. It must be. I'm adding a little more white to it. I want a very light color. I'll come over here. Let's we'll see if we can't. I don't know if this is the exact right brush for this. Hmm. 
I might turn this to the side to have a better angle on my brush brushwork. Sometimes I'll put my tape tabs up high. All right, see if I can get it. So what I did is I changed the positioning so that I could do my brush stroke better and have a better angle on it. Bring some little lines this way. Bringing in some long hairs coming in this way. Turn it over the other direction. This is going to look so great on the time lapse. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> it's always funny to see on, a, on the fine. little short videos about yeah. how like it goes. Just along there. And then I'm going to grab a little more white. Make a much lighter color. Kind of flip this back around. Make sure the load on my brush is nice. I'll come here and add a little highlight of fur right here. Little highlight in that inner ear. And some little highlights on the hairs on the inside. Not all of them, just some. Same thing, this side. I am spending a little more time paying attention to the deer's ear than I might normally because I really liked this deer's ears. All right, a little inside the ears. Ears painted now. I'm also going to come here and grab a little bit of my white. Very, very light color. Just very carefully. Little white markings here, a little bit up there. And I'll add a little highlight right. 
right here. It's kind of a dry brush. And then I'm leaving a little bit of that shadow there so it stays in. Grab a little bit of my dark brown color. Go ahead and make that little mark there. These little marks, these little markings on these animals, they're a big deal. They really, really help us see the animals how they are. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this is again just as a general reminder my bird sienna, my Mars black, my yellow ochre, and white. I'm going to come here and just right over the eye, I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight. Underneath, go ahead and brush out a little bit of highlight as well. Maybe right there. Just kind of picking that up. And grab a little more yellow ochre. A little bit here. I have a highlight there. Kind of dry brush that into a little bit more faded, but where you can still see that the line is there. Dry brushing. Okay. That's a nice little bit of work that we did. Yeah, this has turned out really nice. This is coming out. So let's dry it so that we're not dragging paint anywhere. And let's maybe work on the antlers a little bit. So when we come back, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the antlers. So continuing on with our cute deer, I'm going to grab a number for Raphael D'Artigny D brush. Uh, the D brush is a bit of a filbert shape, but this particular one has kind of a blending end and it's made of hog bristle brushes. If you didn't want to use that, you could just use a small hog bristle round or um, a good stiff brush. What I'm looking for is dry brushing technique. So you're looking for what's in your brush bucket that lets you do dry brushing. Because that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm going to go ahead and get this a little bit wet. And just a gentle reminder that um, try to make sure you're standing up and moving every so often and that you're not just uh, power sitting too long, like about every 40 minutes, every hour. I get up in between the steps and stretch and, and take breaks. And um, I want to encourage you to do that too when you need them. I'm going to take my bird sienna and my Mars black and I'm going to very carefully... Come along the line that I already made and start to paint in. This wonderful, wonderful little deer. Get more into like a little burnt sienna here. A little bit coming forward. Coming back. I'm just back into the burnt sienna, blending it into the Mars black and burnt sienna that I put up at the top. And I'm just doing a rough brush in. Then I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre. And I'm going to blend that in at the center of the belly. Maybe a little bit up here coming down the chest. 
the chesticle. Curve brush stroke. To bend the, the belly. Yeah, it kind of create that... Uh, Illusion of yeah. a belly that is a little bit rounded. The, the curve. The curve. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of my yellow ochre. So I take a little bit of my Mars black, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre. And then come here and start to paint this portion on the neck. So again, I'm, I'm choosing this brush because it gives me a rough brush stroke. Not quite as smooth as my filbert. You can see I'm being very rough with my brushwork. You know, as I come down, I might get a little more burnt sienna and Mars black involved. And go ahead and blend this into the neck area. Make that a nice little transition. Soften that little indent there. Now again, this is the number four, right? I have a number zero too if I want to work the face in the same brush, or I could work just the corner, but I'll probably size down my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of my white into my little deer mix here. Kind of come at the center of this. Very carefully. Brush down into that. A little bit of a highlight. softer as I come up towards the little jaw. And I am going to pay attention to brush directionality here. Just getting a little bit of a blend going there. Just Softly dry brushing here. That's how we're creating the blend is we're dry brushing a little bit. And boy, am I just soft down here. So it just blends, blends, blends. Blends, blends, blends. And it'll rinse out. Go ahead and take a little bit of this into my yellow ochre and then add quite a lot of white to it. Come into the little neck here. Make sure that I've got a nice little white highlight there on my little deer because they have the little they have their little markings, right? You gotta, gotta keep them. Now I can get a little of my blue into my background mix, my white mix. Come underneath here and kind of create a little bit of a, a little bit of a shadow right there. Just a little bit of one. Making a little bit, get back into my darker brown here. Just find that little gray color. And then where I want to, I'll get a little white. And just sort of highlight at this outer edge. Isn't that nice? Okay. Let's dry everything, and then we're going to work on the face a little bit.
Now I'm going to size down to number zero Raphael de Artigny D brush. I generally keep an eight, a four, and a zero around in my brush bucket all the time. I also have them in textures, either are fine to use. And I'm going to use a small detailing brush. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. That's always incredibly helpful. <laughs> the being able to see what you're doing, very useful. I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna Mars black over to my yellow ochre. Begin to paint in a little deer face with this brush here. Go. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and then wipe off the extra um, moisture from it. I do that because sometimes the dry dry bristles are too stiff for a dry brush, which is kind of hard to think of, but can be true. Have you ever had that feeling like, man, this feels like it could be too stiff for a dry brush? I can, I can understand that. Kind of blend down into here. Come up over our little eye. I'm going to get into my white. I'm going to come underneath the eye. I'm going to come above the eye. a little bit highlighted around the eye. And then a little bit in my white. You can kind of see my brush is a little dirty here. Come right here. Make sure there's a little bit of a highlight right there. Blend it in. Back into the little mix here. I may have to work that with my detail brush, I think. Sometimes the areas are just too tight. So I'm going to come back and actually erase a little bit where I went over my um, work there. Now I'm going to grab a little of my burnt sienna into my little mix. Just go ahead and and add a little bit of this nice darker red mix. Get a little yellow ochre into it. I like the softness and the matteness of this brush. It gives that sort of feeling of short fur, which I really, really like. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that down and I'm going to pick up my, actually I'll do my number six Raphael Sepia, I think. And I'll go ahead and grab my doe color, which has got my yellow ochre into my burnt sienna and my Mars black. Make sure I come over this. along a little antler here and then I'm going to want to come over on this far side and paint this all the way in Make sure my deer goes up into my horn. There we go. That's looking really good. Now, once that's all done, we are going to want to dry everything and come back. I'll show you what we do next. 
So I'm going to work down here in the mouth a little bit. I'm going to use my detail brush. This is my number two Raphael Precision. I'm going to get a little of my white color. That's my white fur color here. That's my yellow ochre, my burnt sienna, and a lot more titanium white. And I'm going to just kind of come up here and exaggerate this even more. Kind of getting it a little more in the expression of the deer. And then I'm going to grab a little white white. I'm going to just come and highlight a little bit. I'm going to just dry brush right here very, very carefully, an extra little sort of white spot to the top of that eye. Working my brush into the color so it's a little more muted. And tapping up and down, kind of creating a pattern, but we're it's a little more diffused and not just a line. See how I'm tapping up and down? Mm -hmm. Just a little something that you can do to make it better. All right. While this is all having a think, right, this little part, I, li I just like, I wanted to cute up the expression a little bit. I get it. Um, we're going to come in and start working these antlers here. These antlers. I'm going to mix a little more of my Burnt Sienna into my Mars Black and Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to go ahead and get a little yellow ochre involved in that. I'm going to come through here and start to work out the detailing. Very carefully through here. Added a little more yellow in. And kind of roll my brush to get more of the paint to the toe of the of the brush. And if I boo-boo, I will come back and erase it like I had a little boo-boo there. So this is just giving my antlers a nicer base color. They're a really nice color. I want to do that for both sides, the same, same. Whatever we're doing on the antlers, we just want to match the sides, right? Very nice antlers. They're very nice antlers.
Now I might get a little bit of my darker antler color and I'll where my ear is in front I might go ahead and add a little shadow just so that they stay a little separate right mm -hmm. and I'll wiggle that out so it's not a, just a line all right now I've got a lot of delicate work to do I want to fix that boo-boo got a lot of delicate work to do so I'm going to want to dry this to come back and start adding highlights and little detailing um, just so that we're not smearing it so let's call this a step check on how you're feeling physically and when we come back I will show you how we paint on these antlers next and like highlight them and give them shadows so I'm going to take my number two Raphael precision and I'll go ahead and grab a little bit of my white and mix it into my antler color here a little bit there and we're going to come to the tip of this antler And on the upper side of it, we're going to add a little bit of our highlight. I make sure to not cross this line here, which puts that little stag part of the horn in front. I'm making little kind of scratchy marks. Little scratchy marks. I'm going to tip this to see if I like how it's looking. adding a little white over here. I like to just be able to go through the values of paint. Just little lines. Bit of a dry brush. And I kind of switch it to this. So on this side, it's more on the right side. On this side, it's more on the left side because that's what's most up to the light. All right, but you still have some light coming here, so you've got to blend it around there. Now I stop when I get down a little bit lower. I'm going to come here, and just the tip of this I'm going to brush down. I'm going to rinse my brush out thoroughly. I'm going to go ahead and get some black. I'm going to mix some brown into my black and brown. I want a very dark, dark color. Roll the tip. I'm going to make little bumps. Get my brush a little wet. All those bumps are having a dry. Get a little bit of my black and brown again. Gonna run a little black line along that little antler.
little bit up here. Just this is very fine. That looks pretty good. Rinse out. Rinse out thoroughly. Wipe off because we don't want that weird water drop, right? Get a little bit of our antler color here, our highlight antler color. And tap little highlights on all the little bumps that are down on a little antler down here. See how we're doing? Just a little bit of highlighting on the antlers. Looking pretty good. Yeah, they are. Grab a little bit of my dark color again. Come back through and just I want to make sure it's rolled on the tip. I want a good positioning on my brush. Right. And some little dark lines kind of weaving back in through. See how we're doing? Yeah, I do. A little, little. Yeah. Putting the texture on there. A little texture. Now those horns are being what they're supposed to be, very antlery. Get my little Mars black in that and a little bit of my yellow ochre again. And then some white. Sometimes I rinse out and wipe off my brush just to make sure I don't have so much paint loaded in it that I can't operate it. Want a little more white over here. Mixing up a little more antler color. Just taking the highlights. Kind of streaky. Very rough coming down here. Texture of horn achieved. Grab a little bit of my black again. It has that brown in it, but just a little bit. So it's quite a dark color. It's almost a pure black. Tap that little texture down, right? Come on the underside of this just very carefully with a dark shadow line.
Grab a little bit of a darker antler color. Just building up the textures of the horns. Because they're rough. Rough. Back into my highlight color. With a little more, a little more black than that. So sometimes I'll get away from the highlight that I'm like, oh, it's not gray enough, and then I'll recognize that and stop it. Get back into the highlights that are. There we go. A little bit of texture on that. Now, once you have those all in, you're going to want to dry everything. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you what we do next. So we want to kind of finish out our little guy here. I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre over to my deer color that I had going on over here. There's burnt sienna and Mars black and yellow ochre. And I want to find it again. And always pull just a smidge of white into it. A little highlighted. A little bit coming forward, maybe. Kind of brushing this through the belly. You're keeping those brush strokes the same direction as earlier, huh? Yeah, I'm following the same. I'm curving them just a little bit to exaggerate the barrel. Now I'm going to want to put this brush aside for a second and I'm going to get my yellow ochre back over into my deer color. Load it up fairly, fairly nicely and I'm going to, just so I can see how crisp my line is, make sure from my ear down, like the line coming from the neck up into the ear, should be tight, well defined. Just giving this edge a crisp, clean edge. Doesn't that look That's nice? Awesome. Yeah. That just crisps him up. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my deer color into my white. And I'm going to go ahead and just highlight this ear a little bit and go ahead and come along the top of this ear. Very tight there. Our back is pretty clean, so we're all right there, but I may want to come up into my little kind of more rustic forehead color. Come along this little line here. I'm 
Make sure that's nice and crisp. At least along that edge. Now I can go ahead and get a my number zero brush involved. When I'm on my face, I want to work my number zero D brush. This was the number four for the body, but I like to work the number zero for the face. And I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of that. And just make sure this is kind of scratchy out this way. And then I'm going to get a little black on my zero. And I'm going to come up very carefully. Brush out just a little bit of that. Along this little edge here. See how we're doing? Yeah. Soften it a little bit. Yeah, I see that. Grab a little bit of my white into my deer color. might soften this highlight down a little bit. Definitely want it to have a highlight, but I just don't want it to be quite so. Just a single spot of white. I'm getting a little more white onto my brush. I might wipe off the excess paint. There we go. Just a little bit here, dry brush down. And a little bit here, dry brush back. And maybe a little bit that's actually pretty good. And if it's too much, you just come back with a little bit more of your yellow ochre. Just carefully dry brushing across. I'm trying to create kind of a velvety effect. Just brushing around the face, just making sure that's nice and velvety. Their little deer color. And kind of back there to soften that edge as well. Soften this just a bit, somewhat. softened look at her or at him yeah. i guess it's only hymns right with the antlers with the antlers i think that's that's probably true <laughs> just i don't know I'm, i could probably look that up i think that that's true too oh, that's so, nice. so him uh, he is cute though yeah yeah i think i i i uh you know i just like the face the face is very 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 sweet it is. and i enjoy how sweet the face is I want to, with my glasses, touch a little bit up right here that just looks a little awkward. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of my chocolate brown color, just very carefully. Come above here. Make sure that I've got a nice lid kind of over that eye. That makes sense? Totally makes, makes sense. 
And then I'll bring this up just the, the tiniest amount up so there's a little bit of a differential between the forehead and that. So I'm just making sure my lidding is good, you know, which I like. I'm also going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna. And I'm going to very carefully make sure that this around the eye is painted well. So carefully, I'm holding my breath. That paints that well. So you're just making sure all the little elements on your deer are painted well. Might add a little bit of a white to that. It's a little darker than my lidding. There we go. So you just tweak, 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 tweak until you're like, ooh, I like that very much. Now, before I can do anything else, I need to sign it. Ooh. Because I think we're there. I think so, too. I think we're totally there. And I have wow. to think about how to sign it. Mm. And this is an interesting one because um, everything I use here would really stand out in this corner, like y at the end of the day. So I'm going to use my blue and white. You could almost use the orangey red. Could almost. Oh, yeah, I could. I could in this particular one case. I never, yeah. ever sign you red. You never do. I was just like, but you could here because it's the background color. Because there's enough of it in the background. That'll, you know, make it not so crazy. Or I could use my blue and white. Either one would oh, be good. Yeah, yeah. But I'll do that here with the red. Now, because this is green, this red is really going to pop. But it'll look good in it because it won't, it won't clashy clash. It, see, that's not, it's not, it's nice. It's a deep orange. Yeah. I like it. I like the Sherpa name on there. I, I imagine that all partners like to see their, their partner's name on their creations. I think that's probably true. You're a very good art partner, just so you know. Couldn't do this without you. Well, I certainly couldn't do this without you. Oh, you'd be doing some fun though. You're always well, up to you fun. Well, you'd be doing something fun too. It's like that's totally not fair. <laughs> All right, I've got a stripper signature on there. All right. We have come to the end of our yeah. incredible Andrew Jackson inspired deer journey. So when we come back, I'm gonna tell you what you do next with your painting. So we did it. We, did we went it. through the, so many stages, so many layers. This was a challenging one even for me. I like really had to come up with some techniques I hadn't used before. I had to really think about how to pull the deer out from the background. Um, I'm so glad you guys picked this one. I think we will, um, if we're, I think we've been invited to uh, do another one. So we yeah. may do another one from uh, Andrew's collection. Please again, check out his website and his incredible work. Um, uh, it's such a, it's such a joy to have painted from just such a great joy. And, and Don and I are just very grateful. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Um, and thank you guys too, for your time to follow along with this painting today. If you're here at the end and you painted this whole painting, yeah. congratulations. And thank you very much. Both of those things from the bottom of my heart. Now, if mm -hmm. you'd like to share with me your painting, um, there's my Facebook group, the art Sherpa official. You can also just hashtag the art Sherpa online and all the social media places. I've been really active on Pinterest lately. Um, so definitely go by. And if you haven't already followed that, I've been pinning, I've been pinning like pintastically, pinnerifically. Um, so that's another place that I, I sometimes forget to mention, but basically all the social media I'm there and I'm happy to see your work. It's actually really exciting for me. Because while I love painting it more than that, I love seeing you guys paint it is even more of my favorite. Now, if I used a brush here that you were like, I need that brush to get through this painting, I do have all of the materials that you saw in today's show for sale in my art store. I have an art store where I sell canvases and brushes and paints and all of the supplies to make my paintings. And I have master lists and lots of fun stuff that makes shopping fun and easy. But it is only for the uh, contiguous United States. That sounds right. So um, it just ships in the con yeah, in continental United States. States yes. So um, what I would say also for that is, while I do have brushes that I do think help me, they're always 
two or three brushes that will do a job. So don't feel thwarted. And I try to work with national and international brands. So you should be able to find what I'm using here in my show at your local art store. And if it isn't there, don't forget, you can ask your local art store to buy stuff for you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They're here for the customer. And if they think there's an interest, it's just that it takes them a big investment. But sometimes they can get, they can do orders like, go go ask your local art store. Hey, I'm looking for this brush. I saw it on this video. They could probably help you out. Um, so that's it. And other than that, just congratulations. Thank you for taking this journey with me. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. I want to see you and an easel real soon. Bye-bye.